this is Dorothy with Ducky Grows. Thanks so much for stopping in and watching our video today. So today we're going to talk specifically about um, nutrient solutions. I've talked a little bit about them in the other videos, but now it's time to really get down to the nuts and bolts of nutrient solutions. And we're going to talk about two specific kinds today, both um, nutrient solutions you can buy specifically for hydroponics and nutrient solutions that you can buy that are for um, normal soil planting that you can make the conversion on. Um, all the things we're going to talk about today are specifically for um, small space gardening. So if you have a big hydroponic system outdoors that with a 55 gallon jug, this stuff probably isn't um, really going to be relevant. This is more relevant for those smaller systems, which is what we tend to run. Um, good general information, but more specific for those smaller systems. So let's get into it. First thing you need, obviously, is water. Now, uh, we're on well, as many people are, and wells you have to be um, just concerned about the pH balance as you do with anything. So you have your pH tester, give your water a quick pH test. You know, the pH for any kind of growing needs to be between about 6.5 and 7. So get your pH um, tester and just get some water from your faucet and test the pH. Um, if it's good, great, you have a great base. If you're on city water um, or town water, they sometimes put chlorine in uh, town water and chlorine will definitely play havoc on your plants. So what you wanna do um, is you need to get rid of the chlorine out of your water. You can either buy bottled water, which can get expensive, or you can either boil or aerate the city water and that will take away the chlorine. So give it a little aeration to make sure that there's no chlorine left in there. Once you have some good clean water, you need to decide what you wanna use for um, a nutrient solution. Now, I've used a whole bunch of different things. Um, one of them is by, this is my favorite, this is by General Hydroponics. Um, don't get paid by them, so this is just a, um, an honest review. Um, I like the Maxi Grow. it's a good basic um, starting solution. It works great for growing small plants, small flowers, um, or uh, any kind of greens. So this is just um, a powder, and you just take this powder and you follow the, there's really clear instructions on the, on the back, you follow the instructions and you mix it up. I like to look at color. Um, the color of this, this very, very pale green, is a good indication that there's a, the right amount in here. The brighter the green, the more, the more um, of the solution is in here, and the harsher it can be on your roots. So, to that point, um, one of the things that's really important when you're growing with hydroponics is to realize that your root system is in direct contact with the nutrients. So root burn is a really um, a thing that you have to watch out for in hydroponics. So you want to always start with the least amount of fertilizer possible and kind of gauge your plants and see how they're growing. Different stages, they'll need more nutrients. Um, but start with the lower amount and if you see your plants are maybe struggling a little bit or not looking like they're really vibrant, then add more. Um, again, really good basic instructions in the back of this or any hydroponic um, based uh, fertilizer. So start with a little bit, start with good water, start with a little bit of fertilizer and work your way up, see how your plants react. Um, now to talk about things like this, I always use the term miracle grow. Um, nothing wrong with miracle Grow. Um, this is actually a generic form of miracle Grow, but it's the same. I use it as sort of a universal um, term. So when you're buying any kind of non-hydroponic specific fertilizer, there's only one thing you really have to be careful of. Um, and that then it says water soluble. And this says right here, multi-purpose water soluble fertilizer. Um, obviously your plants, um, the water is in the, in the uh, vessel and your plant roots are trying to get the nutrients out. If you don't have a water soluble solution, what will happen is, is after you mix it up, the, the solution will start to go down to the bottom uh, and then it's really just where your plants can't reach it. So um, you wanna make sure that the nutrients, whatever you use, stay suspended. If you're unsure about that, just take a little bit of it, put it in a, in a gallon jug, shake it up, and wait a couple of days. If you don't see anything falling to the bottom, then you know it'll stay suspended and your plant roots can get at the, the um, nutrients that they need really easily. Now, the other thing to be really careful about um, when it comes to when you buy a generic 
um, kind of plant food, even a water soluble one, you have to make sure that it is um, okay for hydroponics. This has no instructions for hydroponics and a lot of them don't have instructions for hydroponic use. So this assumes that you're gonna put it in with a bunch of soil. The plant roots then can go and take what they need. In a hydroponic system, the plants have, again, direct access to those nutrients and burning can be a real issue. So when you're using generic plant food, and there's, there's a lot of good ones out there, they're really great, easy to find. Um, I use them myself because they're easy to find. You can go to any Walmart and get um, water-soluble plant food. Really start with a little bit, um, really light mixture is good because what will happen again is your plants will start to grow. If you see them struggling a little bit, add a little bit more um, of the nutrient solution in, but it, you can't take it back out necessarily. So start with a little bit and work your way up until you find out what the good balance is for your plants. Okay, so we've tested our water for pH. We know we have no chlorine in it. We have either the generic plant food or the hydroponic specific plant food. Our water solution is light because our plants don't want to have burnt roots. Um, and we're pretty much all set to go. Couple other things, um, Epsom salt is great. Um, most hydroponic gardeners use Epsom salt. Um, don't use any other kind of salt, just use Epsom salt. There are some minerals in here that your plants will need that they would typically get out of the soil that don't necessarily come um, in these pre-done mixes. So you wanna use about a quarter of a teaspoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water. Um, that will, one, um, give the plants some nutrients that they need, some um, minerals. The other thing it does is it actually softens the water a little bit. The softer the water is, the easier the nutrients are able to be retracted by the plants. Um, so Epsom salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon per gallon is a good thing. Um, and talking about pH, when you put the water solution in your system, um, the pH is really important to check. Okay, so pH, um, always harp on this because I have killed many of plants with high pH. So I have my fancy dancy pH tester, or again, you can use one of the strips. This is a hydroponic system that we've had going for a while. Um, before I add more nutrients, the plants have, have been drinking it, before I add more nutrients, I'm gonna check my pH. So I'll just throw this in here real quick and check so the pH in this water solution is actually pretty perfect. It's 6.3. So nothing needs to be done on this. But after a while, when the plants are using up some of the nutrients and moving around and doing growing and doing their thing, the pH can change. And again, using a small system, I wouldn't recommend this on a large system, but on a small system, there's a couple things that you can do to adjust your pH. Um, lemon juice, just a couple of drops of lemon juice. So this planter right here needs some extra solution. The plants have been growing a while, they're nice and healthy, but the solution is getting low on it. So I've mixed some solution up and I could really use either. But, and the pH in this is really good, so I'll just pour this straight in. But let's say I tested this and the pH was high. I would add a couple of drops of lemon juice into the solution and shake it up real good and then check the solution to just make sure that it's lower than it should be um, and that would balance this out. So if your pH, when you're, before you add more solution, if your pH is high, make sure you can um, lower it. A couple drops of lemon juice is fine. Um, if the pH is really, really low, which it happens less often, but occasionally the pH can be really low, you can add just a little quarter teaspoon of baking soda normal baking soda will raise the pH level. So you wanna keep the pH good, you wanna keep a little salt in the solution, um, and you wanna just use whatever nutrient solution you want, whether it's hydroponic specific or um, not hydroponic specific, as long as you start with a light solution, build your way up, and always check um, to make sure the pH. Now, how can you tell if your solution is good or not? There's a really easy way to tell. Um, other than testing or looking. I always look at the color because of, if the color is good, um, a nice light green, or in this case, a nice light blue, and the plants look healthy, you're pretty much all set. 
But the easiest way to tell if you're running into a problem with a hydroponic system is the root system. I'm gonna reach over here and grab one of my plants out. Let's grab this one. Probably a good one. Um, so you can kind of see this plant here. The roots are really white. Um, the whiter the roots, the healthier the root system, and the better the you know your solution is doing. This is actually an aqua um, one from my fish tank. So it's actually just a little bit tinged brown, but that's because of my fish tank, not because of the solution being bad. Um, the whiter the roots, a really healthy plant will have very, very, yeah, this is probably a better one, very, very white roots. You'll see um, the roots, especially up top, will start to get really black, and that means you have a problem. Um, and we're gonna do a video on what the problems can be and how you can fix them. But basically, um, Whenever you go to refill a system, just make sure the, the roots are very white. Um, problems are typically lack of oxygen would be a big one. High pH obviously would be another big one. Um, those are really the two that will cause, cause dark roots. As soon as the roots start to get dark, the plant will then eventually die. So get right on it. If the roots are dark, then uh, check your oxygen. Um, maybe put an extra aerator or bubbler in your solution. Check your pH. Um, don't add more solution because that's not gonna be the problem. The problem with dark roots is never too little solution. Sometimes it's too much solution. So just play with it a little bit. It's a bit of a, an art. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd love to answer your questions. I know sometimes I babble a little bit, so um, not always um, answering all the questions I should. So please let me know. The other thing is, um, our next video I'm really excited about, we're gonna actually do um, a compost tea. Neither one of these things are considered organic, um, but compost tea is. And if you're an avid organic farmer and you wanna do that indoors, or you just don't wanna spend the money at the store to buy some of these solutions, um, you can do compost tea. So tune in in a couple of days and I will show you how to do this exact same process, but without buying something, but doing compost tea instead. Um, thanks for stopping in and watching our video. I hope that I answered some questions for you. Um, again, please subscribe. If you like us, um, please let me know what we could do to maybe make things clearer for you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.